Well, we're going to make a transition now and start looking at the idea of data analysis. Hey, I know, don't get too excited here. But it is pretty cool what we can do with mathematics and make sense of real life phenomenon. We can make comparisons. We can make decisions based on the data. And I'm going to have you do that in a couple cases. To get started, uh, I'm going to use the situation here of baseball. Baseball season's right around the corner. And so we're going to discuss um, baseball, who of all the sports is probably the most statistically oriented sport I've ever seen. And what we're going to look at specifically is who's the greatest home run hitter of all time. Just for a brief introduction here, I have Barry Bonds, if you've heard of him. He uh, hit 73 home runs in one season, which is the highest ever. And um, I have another guy named Roger Maris. He played back in the 60s. And why I have him up there is because he hit 61 home runs in one season. And at that time that he did that, he broke the record of Babe Ruth. And so we're going to look at these two gentlemen and see who would be the greatest home run hitter of all time. So first of all, what you see here are Barry Bonds' home runs each of his each season. So his first season, 16 home runs. His second season, 25 home runs, etc. Roger Maris, his first season, 14 home runs. His second season, 28 home runs, etc. What I did there in blue, the blue numbers are the same numbers you see in black, just that I've or organized them in order from lowest to highest. So hopefully, if I've done it well, 16 was um, Barry Bonds' first and lowest number of home runs ever hit in a full season, and then in order all the way up to the 73. And then same thing here, Maris hit his 61 after what, one, two, three, four, it was his fifth season. But as I put these numbers in order from highest to low, from lowest to highest, we get what you see there in blue. So what would we do to compare this? If you just look at a bunch of numbers, it's really hard to compare. Maybe you'd look and say, well, 73 for Bonds is bigger than 61 for Maris. Uh, maybe you look at Maris and you see a bunch of numbers on the low side. But what's challenging, and this is a small data set compared to things that really happen in the world, uh, the, well, the, the challenge is you're just looking at a sea of numbers. And so it's helpful to have a more visual representation of these things. So here's how we do it. First of all, we'll, we'll, we will pick out um, something that we call the median. The median is just like on a road, the median is down the center of the road. <laughs> the median is the number smack dab in the middle of the data set. So let's look at Barry Bonds. There's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 30, 40, 50, 16 numbers. Let's find the number that's right in the middle. Well, some students like to say, well, let's cross off the first and the last, cross off, cross off, cross off, cross off, cross off until they get to the middle. That's a good strategy to help you find the middle. Well, let's just see if we can find it. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Let's go one more. Let's go one more. See, with an even number of numbers, there is no number that's smack dab in the middle. It's actually the middle are these two numbers. So look, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. There are two numbers that are literally in the middle. So what we do with those two numbers is we take the average of those two numbers. So 34 plus 34, 68, 68 divided by 2, 34. So in this case, because that 34 happened twice, two times, Barry Bonds hit 34 home runs in one season, and those 34s happen to be smack dab in the middle, and so the average is 34. So we would say that for Barry Bonds, the median is 34. And what we do then is we just plot that point over here. So 20, 34 is going to be right about here. I'm just going to put a dot right there for Barry Bonds at 34. Um, then we have, well, let's do, let's do Maris. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So kind of the same thing, an even number of numbers. I'm probably going to find out that there's two numbers in the middle. So let's go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Let's go one more in. Ah, the middle again. There's nothing there. So we'll take the average of those two, 16 and 23. 16 plus 23, 39. 
39 divided by 2. 19.5. So for Maris, his median is 19.5. So that's about here. Now I'm just putting them up on this scale here just to differentiate uh, who's who, not to put any kind of a scale here. All I'm marking off is like marking on a number line, 19.5 and, and 34. All right, now what we do is we look to the left of the median. To the left of the median, now the median, remember, was the 34. To the left of the median, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight numbers. And what we pick now is the middle of the left side of the numbers. And that number is called the first quartile. So to the left of this 34 median, one, two, three, one, two, three, one more, one more, again, there's nothing there in the middle, but man, with buried bonds, everything works out nice. Two 25s right there, 25 and 25 is 50, divided by two is 25, so we would say the first quartile for Barry bonds is 25. So 20, 30, 25, and then you write about there. What about Maris? 19.5 was the median. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Let's come in 3. Let's come in 3. And again, there is no middle. But 9 and 13 is 22. Half 22 is 11. And so Roger Maris is going to have a first quartile of 11. Well, guess what? If there's a first quartile and then there's a middle, the median, there has to be a third quartile. So we're going to look to the right side of the median. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight numbers. We're going to go smack dab in the middle. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Again, no middle, but 40, 42. Let's take the average. Let's pick a middle number. 40 and 42 is 82. 82 divided by 2 is 41. Of course, 41 is in the middle of 40 and 42. So 41 is the what we call the third quartile. 41, so that's going to be right about here. What about Maris? Uh, to the right side of the median of 19.5, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 numbers. So 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, nothing in the middle once again. So we average 28 and 33. 28 plus 33, 61. 61 divided by 2, it's going to be 30.5. So Maris has a third quartile of 30.5. <clears throat> All right, so we find the median. And then basically, we find the median of the left side, the first quartile. We find the median of the right side, this third quartile, and then there's two more numbers that we like to find when we're making these plots. The max and the min. The maximum number and the minimum number. For Barry Bonds, minimum of 16. So we'll plot 16. Maybe right about there. And the maximum number of 73. 60, 73 is going to be somewhere about there. For Maris, median, I'm sorry, minimum of 5, maximum of 61. So 5 is going to be back here somewhere, and 61 is going to be right about there. All right, so these five numbers, the median, the first quartile, the third quartile, the max, the min, is called the five number summary. And what we like to do with that five number summary is then plot those points, but then just looking at a bunch of dots on a plot is not that exciting. So here's how we create a real plot. This was the minimum for bonds of 16 home runs in a season. We draw a line from that minimum to the first quartile. From the first quartile to the third quartile, we make a little rectangular box the median being right there. So minimum, first quartile, median, third quartile, to the max. We make a box plot, or sometimes called a box and whisker plot. The box, obviously, the rectangle there in the center. The whiskers being those lines to the edge. It's just a way to visually represent what's happening. Here's what it looks like for Maris. 
whisker, box, median, whisker. And now what we can do is look at those two plots and determine maybe who we might think is the greatest home run hitter of all time. But that's for later.